Okay, so we've been able to look at the clip launch properties as well as the clip envelopes. And what I like to do to finish this lesson out is just kind of combine the best of these two uh, amazing worlds. And let's see what can happen when we combine clip envelopes with, let's say, follow action. Let's go back to our drums over here. And if I play my drums, right now they're doing some random follow action. And as nice as that is, I like to have a bit more continuity. So I'm gonna make it so that each one triggers the next clip. Okay. All right, this will give us another window into a future lesson. I wanna apply some delay to my drum, but I only want the delay to hit maybe every time there's a snare that plays. Uh, and maybe not even every single snare, maybe just certain snares in certain clips uh, as these clips cycle through their follow action. The best way for me to achieve this is to use a send and return. And again, we're gonna go over the send and return in more detail later. Uh, this is just here to kind of set a foundation for that future lesson. I'm gonna place a delay effect on the A return. Go into my browser, my audio effects are here. I'm gonna scroll down to a delay device that's called ping pong delay, which is my favorite delay device in Ableton Live. I'm not gonna use a preset, I just wanna use the default settings, so I'm just gonna select the ping pong delay and drag and drop this over to my A return. There it is. Now, we're gonna talk a lot more about effects and the differences between putting an effect directly on a track versus having it on a return. For now, the main thing to know is that this particular effect has a dry, wet knob. If we send audio to it and it's completely dry, we won't hear any of the effect come out. If we send audio to it and it's completely wet, we're only gonna hear the output of the effect. And by placing this delay on my return, what I can do now, here's my A return, and each track has an A send. I can turn up my A send to send audio to the A return, and all I'm gonna hear come out of here is the output of the delay. The output of the delay will be blended with the output of this track, and we'll hear both of them come out of our master. So this is a nice way to be able to add an effect like delay or reverb without losing any of the dry signal from our drums. So a quick example of how this would work. Play the drums. The minute I turn on my A send knob, I turn the A send knob down, no more delay. Now in the clip envelope, uh, if you guys remember, we were able to see the A return and the B return. That was an option when we chose the clip envelopes. What I'd like to do is go to one of these clip envelopes, or go to one of these clips, I should say, one that has a snare. This one has a couple different snares, and I wanna make it so that when the snare plays, the snare gets sent to the ping pong delay. Now, one of my favorite things about working with the envelopes here is sometimes when you're dealing with effects or you're dealing with instruments, there might be a long list of places where you can apply a clip envelope. Uh, and sometimes it's difficult to find the exact thing that you want to affect. However, the last thing that you touch, the last parameter that you will uh, touch is what shows up here in the clip envelope chooser boxes. So for example, if I touch the pan uh, pot right here, it changes to mixer and track panning. If I touch the track mute button, the speaker on off, it changes to mixer, speaker on. What I want to affect is the ascend volume. So basically I want to turn this up uh, when certain snares hit so that that sound will get sent to the delay. I don't want this to be on all the time, only when certain notes hit. I know that if I use my pencil tool, I can uh, basically draw an automation that snaps to certain parts of my beat grid, which should make it easier to time this properly. So I can see that my envelope is visible because this yellow arrow next to where it says envelopes is on. If that wasn't on, then that means I'm not looking at the envelope. So let me turn that back on, there's my envelope. I want this clip envelope to be linked to the loop length of the clip because I want to affect specific notes inside of the clip. And if this is linked, I'll be able to see the audio content in the clip while I'm drawing my envelope. All I have to do now is simply draw this in. The little pink dashed line here is showing me that the current value of this parameter of the ascend is zero. So I want this to turn on when this snare plays. I also want it to turn on when this last snare plays as well. So if I play this one clip again now, you'll notice.
we had that ASIN knob turning on when we got to that one clip. And when we play it again, you'll see. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do some automation with this very first clip as well. So I'm still looking at the clip envelope. I haven't changed anything uh, in the chooser boxes here. So I'm still gonna be affecting the uh, A send level, the amount that we're sending to the A return. And I'm still using my pencil tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make it, let's play this clip because I don't remember how this one sounds. Ah, there we go. All right. So I'm just gonna do the delay on just this one snare here. So let's go ahead and play that. So we can see every time there's some automation for that knob, there's a red dot that shows up. We didn't do any automation on the second clip. We did on the third clip. And there we go. So let's go ahead and bring that in with our little rubber chipmunk sound. So again, just start importing some audio, uh, start messing around with some different loops. Once you get comfortable with that, you can start playing with the launch properties. Follow action is a great way to take a group of different clips, duplicate them, isolate different loops, and create more variation out of what was once a very static loop. Uh, and then the clip envelopes are extremely powerful. So again, we're not even really playing with effects that much yet, but every parameter of every effect that you add um, when you start playing with the different instruments, all the parameters of those instruments, all of them can be manipulated by clip envelopes, and each clip can have a lot of different envelopes. So you're not limited in what you're able to automate uh, at any given time.